Hello. The purpose of this short video is to show how to use PyTorch deep learning library for creating simple deep learning models. We will start by introducing some basic math operations with PyTorch and also showing how to move data in PyTorch format between CPU and GPU devices. We will then do a simple regression task with a neural network and then finally we will show how to do some simple image cleaning of an artificial periodic lattice with a convolutional denoising autoencoder. To open this notebook, follow the link in the video description. Um, if this is your first time executing the Jupyter notebook, you may want to go through the introduction section at the beginning of this notebook. Uh, this introduction includes an overview of basic notebook rules, an overview of collapse user interfaces, And also it shows how to run simple shell to commands from a notebook, which you may find useful. All right, let's start working with PyTorch library. First, we import PyTorch module. Um, so, all of deep learning is computations on tensors, and tensors are generalizations of a matrix that can be indexed in more than two dimensions. So, let's define some simple tensors in PyTorch. Specifically, we'll create a 3x3 three three tensor containing random numbers, and then a 3x3 three three tensor containing all ones, and then identity 3x3 three three tensor. All right, now let's print the tensors that we've just created. Now we can do some basic math with these tensors as long as more advanced math, but here we'll just do a subtraction and addition of our tensors. All right, and we can print the results. Uh, it is very easy to convert between PyTorch tensors and classical NumPy arrays. It's just one line of code. So in this cell on line one, we convert our PyTorch tensor to a regular NumPy array, and then we print results. And then on uh, line three, we convert our NumPy array back to a PyTorch tensor. So again, it's just one line of code, very convenient. We can also uh, concatenate tensors along the specified axis, uh, just uh, pretty much the same way we would do it uh, in a NumPy module. So here we can concatenate two 2D tensors along the rows. And here we can concatenate uh, uh, our two 2D tensors along the column. So again, this is very similar to how you typically do it in a NumPy module. Uh, one of the biggest advantages of using PyTorch tensors is that you can transfer them to a GPU device for faster computations involving tensor operations. And this is something you cannot do for a regular NumPy array. Uh, now, Google Colab actually provides one free GPU device uh, to anyone with a Google account. And we can run this cell to confirm that we have this uh, one GPU device. Now, if you run the cell and the output of the cell is zero instead of one, uh, meaning you don't have any GPU device available, then you should go to uh, Notebook Settings, and uh, here you select a GPU as your hardware accelerator. So none means you just run everything on the CPU. And um, TPU is a tensor processing unit, which is also a very cool hardware accelerator. Unfortunately, as of this moment, PyTorch does not support TPU, so we'll stick to GPU. Uh, we can also get a name of a GPU device that is currently available to, available to us. It is usually either Tesla K80 or Tesla uh, T4. So it's Tesla K80 in this particular case. Um, and now we can actually transfer uh, one of our tensors to a GPU device by running this uh, command. All right, so now uh, one of our tensors actually sits on the GPU device. And we can just double check that it is actually on the GPU by running this cell. And yes, it actually sits on the GPU device. Now uh, we can transfer it back to a CPU device by running this uh, line of code. 
and now it's back on a CPU. And we can double check that it is no longer on GPU by running this cell. All right. Now, um, when we do a, a model training, when we train our neural network, then we typically transfer our data and our model to GPU device and we perform all the uh, training, uh, all the computations that we need to do during model training on a GPU. And then typically in the most cases, once a model is trained, uh, we transfer it back to a CPU and then we will uh, we make all the predictions with a trained model on a CPU device in, in, in the most cases. All right. And now let's do a simple regression with a neural network in PyTorch. So neural networks are universal function approximators. And to illustrate this, let's generate uh, data points using just a simple sign function and then corrupt the produced data with a random noise. And then we're going to use a very simple neural net network to fit this target distribution. Uh, we'll generate the data using uh, a PyTorch module, although the exact same thing can be done with a uh, NumPy module. All right, now let's plot the generated data. Oh, by the way, one small caveat here is that since we started this notebook from the middle and not from the beginning, we actually skipped some imports, including an import of matplotlib module for data visualization. Luckily, uh, Google Colab has this uh, very cool feature where we can just insert a scratch code cell and do some operations that, you know, instead of adding an additional cell to a notebook and then perhaps sometimes forgetting to delete it, and this sometimes can make your notebook look very messy, we just insert this scratch code cell and we use it to import uh, matplotlib as uh, PLT and um, let's also import NumPy. All right. And we run the scratch code cell and then we close it and we forget about it. And now let's uh, plot the generated data. All right, so this is a noisy sign distribution. Now we are going to construct a very simple neural network to fit this data distribution. Uh, so our neural network will have just two fully connected layers, each having 100 neurons activated by leaky rectified linear unit function. And so we built our model in this cell. So just run the cell. All right. And now we will move our model together with the training data to GPU device for faster computations. All right. Next, we specify a loss function and an optimizer for uh, a neural network training. So our optimizer is stochastic gradient descent and our loss function, which we call criterion here, is a mean squared loss. All right, and finally, we are going to train our uh, simple model. So here we wrote a simple training loop. It always starts with uh, clearing uh, gradients from the previous run. And then what we do is that we propagate a variable X through a network and get models prediction. And then we compare a predicted value with a true value and calculate um, by calculating mean squared loss. And then we, uh, um, sorry about that. And then we uh, do bug propagation to compute gradients. And then we optimize our weights and then print the statistics. All right, so let's let's run it. It should not take longer than a minute. All right, now let's transfer data back to CPU and convert it to NumPy array for plotting. All right, and let's plot the results. So the blue uh, dots here uh, is the original uh, distribution of uh, data points and the orange curve is a model prediction. And we can actually see that uh, it's a pretty uh, decent uh, prediction. All right, uh, so notice that our neural network uh, just approximated uh, a sign function from this noisy distribution. It actually didn't learn 
the uh, the function itself. Uh, all right, so now let's see how good our model is at making predictions for new data points. So we'll transfer our model to a CPU as well. And now we specify a new data point uh, in with a value in radians and we'll make a prediction. So this is a new data point on line one and we'll just confirm that this data point was not a part of our initial training uh, data and then we'll make a prediction and then we'll uh, uh, print it. All right, so this was a new data point and if we compare model's prediction with a true value, then it's actually very close, okay? So, uh, which is pretty good uh, considering how noisy our data was and that it took us just less than a minute to uh, train our model. Now let's learn how to clean images with a neural network. Specifically, I'm going to demonstrate how to clean an image of a fake atomic lattice with a convolutional neural network. Uh, now, the reason I call it fake atomic lattice is because unlike real lattices, it has a perfect periodicity, meaning no defects, no local distortions, and we are going to consider only Gaussian noise and no uh, image distortions or artifacts that are common in the experimental data. So this is obviously not an experimental data, this is a simulated or perhaps it's better to call it a synthetic data. All right, so let's... Uh, start by downloading an image of a single atom and the corresponding label, aka ground truth. Now, in this case, uh, what I mean by atom is just a 2D Gaussian blob, and the uh, ground truth is um, it's a circle object where the value of all pixels inside the circle is equal to 1, and everything outside the circle is equal to 0, and the center of the circle is the same as the center of the atom. Uh, so in this figure, uh, this ground truth is overlaid with the uh, image of an atom. And by the way, it is up to us how to define the size of this uh, ground truth circle, but if we make it too small, then there may be some issues during the model training during due to the so-called uh, class imbalance problem. Uh, all right, so next we are going to define... Um, a function that will uh, generate our fake um, atomic lattice. So what this function does is that it takes uh, an image of the single atom and an image of the corresponding ground truth, and then it tiles both images to create an artificial uh, lattice, and then it adds uh, Gaussian noise to uh, this lattice. Uh, then it normalizes it, uh, and uh, it also makes sure that uh, the image dimensions will be compatible with the architecture of our convolutional uh, neural network. All right. So let's see how this function works. Let's generate a noisy atomic lattice and corresponding uh, ground truth. All right. So the image of, on the left is our training image and the image on the right here is our ground truth, AKA labeled image, but labeled on the level of individual pixels. Uh, and so what our network is going to learn is how to uh, get from the uh, image on the left to the image on the right. And obviously we will feed uh, different images into our network. So we will uh, change the level of noise for every new uh, training image so that the network, our network will learn that there is uh, more than one level of noise. Um, all right, so uh, the type of neural network that we are going to use here, it's, it's called a, a convolutional autoencoder. And so it has, you can think of it as uh, if it, have, it has uh, two blocks, uh, one is the so-called encoder part, and another one is the decoder part. Now, encoder part consists of alternating convolutional layers uh, activated by a rectified linear unit, and for, for which are used for feature extraction, and then max pooling layers for reducing the size of data and accounting for translation invariance. And then the decoder uh, part, it basically maps the extracted features back to the resolution of the uh, input image. And it uh, has the same convolutional layers as the encoder, but in the reversed order. And also instead of max pooling layers, now we have upsampling layers. And then we have a final layer uh, that uh, categorizes every pixel in the image as belonging to a, a certain class, which in this case is either atom or background. But 
we can have more classes. Uh, we can have actually, um, I guess for, for real data, we can have as many classes as number of elements in the periodic table. All right. Okay, and now it's just as in the previous example, we uh, specify a loss function and our weights optimizer. Then we transfer our model to a GPU device. And then we do model training. Notice that it is uh, almost the same uh, loop, training loop as we used before. The only difference here is that uh, for each iteration, we generate new training data. And well, the only thing that is different is the level of noise, right? So on line eight, we always generate new training data. So tra new training image and the new and the corresponding uh, ground truth, right? Th then since we actually use NumPy model to generate uh, training data, then we um, convert that NumPy data to a, a torch tensor. And then we transfer uh, this uh, torch, torch tensors with the training data to a GPU device. So it's line 13 and line 14. And then we do uh, the same uh, procedure as we did before. So we propagate a variable uh, uh, with a, our training image uh, through a network and we get a model's prediction. Then we uh, calculate a, a reconstruction error, so our loss and then we do bug propagation to compute gradients and then we optimize weights and uh, we print statistics so it should take about three to four uh, minutes to complete the model training so let's just uh, wait and now let's transfer our model back to a cpu device and now we are going to test how well it works. So for that, we will generate a new uh, data. Let's call it test data. And the difference will be that uh, the noise level in the test data will exceed the noise level uh, in the training data. And so let's see how well our model will perform on this much noisier data. So let's make a prediction, and then let's plot the results. All right, so on the uh, left, you see the noisy test data or validation data. And uh, then the second uh, image is a network prediction. So it's basically the last, uh, the final convolutional layer of uh, our denoising uh, autoencoder. And then the third, image, uh, the one on the right, uh, shows network predictions with uh, the, um, so the, the, the values in the final layer are distributed between zero and one. Uh, we can think about it as a probability as seen by a neural network. And here we show model predictions with probability greater than 0 0.9. So it performed quite well. Now let's just make sure that it does not generate uh, this type of square atomic lattices all the time, even you know when there is um, only noise and no uh, atomic lattice at all. So let's just uh, generate image with some really crazy amount of noise where there are where, where there are no atoms anymore, and let's see how our trade network performs on that type of data. All right. So here you can see the image that has so much noise that there are just no atoms anymore. And then you can see that network prediction is basically that there are no atoms. That's what our network predicted to us. And this is exactly how we want it to be because we don't want it to you know, produce uh, atoms just from noise. So that's exactly how we want it to behave. And with that, I'm going to conclude this video and uh, thank you for watching it. And just as a reminder, uh, you can access this exact same notebook that uh, we worked with today from a link in the video description section under this video on YouTube.